Um, sort of apropos of, of that, and, and it seems like there's a, there's a huge difference between the youth in Vietnam with the draft and the youth today where there isn't time to deal with those issues. Also, the journalism looks a lot different from from back yeah. in Vietnam. Like people aren't seeing those images you of soldiers' aren't you know kids' arms on TV at dinner time anymore. And I was wondering if you guys could comment a little about about that and what gets filtered out of out of Iraq and learn their lesson in Vietnam. Yeah, not to uh, you know show what's Don't going show on. They, uh, that's why we have embedded reporters and. Um, you just you don't see any of it, and so if someone doesn't see it, you know they go to school, they come home, they're never exposed to what's happening. You know how can you really? I mean, what's where's the impulse if they if they don't feel it in their you know bank account or something? I mean, they're they're insulating it. You know, a large section segment of of uh, American society against it. And, uh, so they don't, since they don't feel it, they don't, uh, they don't want, it, they're not moved to do anything about it. No. Most of the news, major corporate media is owned by the same corporations that are benefiting from this war. And there's just a New York Times article that came out that there was actually paid journalists that infiltrated different news organizations to write stories that were already a controlled message by the government. And they've, a lot of them been outed, but we can't find them all. So our government is actually putting people on the payroll to infiltrate NBC, CBS, CNN, and, and give their story. And a lot of them are ex-military. And uh, you know, there's, a, there's a huge, huge push for the corporate media just to, to perpetuate this war. In the actual combat zone, most of them are in the green zone. And they get their information from military sources. While I was in Iraq at Fob Scunion, I didn't see a single journalist, not a single one the entire year I was there. So they certainly didn't cover any stories in and around Bakuba. So, you know, that's, that's very difficult. But you do see documentaries coming out that are very, very powerful. Um, you see independent media. There's stuff on the Internet. So hopefully as technology increases, we're going to have these other independent sources that are doing the real journalism. Where's Sean from the Leviathan? Right here. Right on. Sean, your, your, your paper here in, in, you know, CC. You know, that's, that's an important source, and if you want some real investigative journalism, you know, you might have to turn to these alternative sources to, to get, your, get the real facts. Check out the Arabic papers. See what they're writing. I mean, there's easy ways to get online and, and find out some of these other papers that are actually translated for you to get the other point of view on what's going on. you got to go to other countries' news sources <laughs> to find out what's going on in your own country. It's very funny just how different the world views the war in Iraq from us. It's, it's not because they're warped or they're stupid or they hate America, it's, it's because their media isn't being forced <coughs> to like, like ours. So. There's operations in Iraq of U.S. military trying to kill journalists to su suppress certain stories. We have a huge uh, civilian firm that, that actually exists in, in uh, the Middle East that is producing news stories for even Arabic sources. So our sources pick up their news stories thinking that they're real. So there's, there's a huge information war, a mind war, that's going on around this, this fight. <coughs> the whole idea that Maqtada al-Sadar is uh, supporting a huge nationalistic resistance of the occupation is something we don't really hear. We just hear that he's some sort of terrorist or Iranian-backed uh, Muslim radical uh, uh, sheep but, or uh, cleric. But we don't, we don't know the whole story on, on what's going on behind the scenes. And, you know, we don't see the, the millions of people marching in peaceful demonstrations in Iraq to get rid of the occupation. We don't see it. But it's going on every day in Iraq. At the Winter Soldier, you know, when I agreed to testify at the recent Winter Soldier, I had no idea of the original Winter Soldier and that there hadn't been a Winter Soldier since the first Winter Soldier. News agencies from all around the world was there. Who was missing? American corporate media. None of them were there. CBS, NBC, Fox, CNN, none of them were there. But BBC we had, was there. We had BBC, we had Al Jazeera, we had um, PBS. Uh, they were all there, but nothing from corporate media. Amy Goodman was there. <laughs> yeah, the, Al, the Al Jazeera website is, is a pretty good place for news. They have an English page. And, uh, so just go to aljazeera.com, I guess, slash English. Has anybody seen Control Room? <coughs> but, uh, 
It's a documentary about uh, Al Jazeera and uh, Josh Rushing, who is the Marine uh, officer who was in charge of kind of being the li liaison for Al Jazeera, who was pretty opposed to Al Jazeera at the time in the making of the movie. He has actually quit the Marines and now has taken up a job for Al Jazeera and is working in Washington, D.C. for Al Jazeera International. Yeah. Actually, his book is at the Pikes Peak Library 